Welcome back to another episode of the Who You Know Show podcast, where what you know is important, but who you know can make all the difference in your business, career, relationships, and life. My name is Trevor Houston, and on this show, you'll learn the strategy, grit, and mindset it takes to overcome obstacles so you can level up in your career, recover your cash flow, and live the life of purpose that God intended for you. Don't forget to look at the mic drop moments time stamped in the show notes below. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure to pay it forward, subscribe and leave an honest review so we can improve. Thanks for listening. My name is Trevor Houston, and please enjoy this episode of the Who You Know Show. You got Casey Haston in the house. I want to be extremely respectful of your time because I know you have your own podcast. Yes. That you're gonna you're gonna like leave like us here. Leave, yeah. yeah. Like right up. Yeah, at yeah, this, right, right, yeah. Yep. right around yeah. the corner. So I want to make sure I can squeeze out as much value out of this time that we have. Tell us real quickly what is what's the most creative way that you've seen someone follow up? Um, probably I'm gonna have to go with the bomb bomb. The bomb bomb. Yeah. The bomb. The bomb. Definitely bomb. been probably the most creative way that I've seen somebody follow up. Okay. Yeah. Seeing the video to get somebody's yep. attention. No, what about the, the worst experience following up? What's the worst thing you've ever seen? Somebody that calls back to back to back to back to back uh, and either, you know, they won't leave a message. They just like power dial you. Uh, and that's like, to me, that's psycho. You know, oh, that's not it good. It is psycho. And um, just. Shame on y'all. Yeah, don't do that. That's not nice. <laughs> doing that. Call, leave one message, give them 24 hours at least to respond because people are busy, you know. And that's one of the expectations that I set up with my candidates when I'm meeting with them is that if you call and leave me a message, I will call you back within 24 hours. Yeah. Which, in other words, I'm not saying don't call me again, but kind of am. Because I know you called and I will call you back. Well, I've we- made you that promise. Oh, set up yeah. that expectation in the beginning. Some people do like the email. Some people do like the LinkedIn messaging. But there is so much noise in my email and in my LinkedIn messaging that it is. But I check my voicemail every time I go back to my desk. And so that's really, if you want my attention, the best way. But I set that up, that expectation in the very beginning so that you know that. And Well, I, that actually brings up a good point, which is there is no right or wrong way, right? Because yeah. everybody's mm-hmm. different. Probably some people are the same way. They don't probably check their messages as much, mm-hmm. but they're more responsive somewhere else. So you have to do it all. Guys, you have to do it's it all. about getting the attention. You said it. Yep. People are busy, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And so how do you get their attention? And there's a lot of different ways to communicate d- today. You've got text message, phone call, instant message, LinkedIn, bomb uh, bomb emails, regular emails. Uh, you know, heck, you're, you're live commenting in right now. Right. There's, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of different ways to communicate. And the key is to find out how they prefer to be contacted. Good point. Exactly. That's exactly right. And because for me, I'll give you a perfect example. Like, I'm I'm a millennial. I'm 32 years old. Me too. All right. I do not respond well, and Mark knows this, with text message. Yeah. I'm not good with text message. And a lot of people would be like, huh? You're millennial, 32, you're going to text. No, I'm really good with email. If you want to get a hold of me, get me get to my email. Yeah, he is. Not my text message. I why? And voicemail, I'm bad with voicemail too. I'll get back to you like in a couple of days or whatever on a voicemail. Don't stereotype us, y'all. Whatever, whatever they prefer. Whatever is their right. preferred ask method. Ask them, guys. Ask them. Yeah. When you're mm-hmm. having that communication with them. Ask them. Just ask. ask. Right. Just well, ask. <laughs> and that's another thing is that, you know, a lot of people they're they're called scared, timid, too shy. They don't want to ask, right? Yeah. Um, maybe it's just the confrontation, right, aspect of it. But look, you don't ask, you don't get. That's it. All you have to say is, how would you like for me to follow up with you? Yeah. That's well, it. That's your preferred method, yeah, 100%. It doesn't give them an option to say don't follow up. Yeah, because for me, like Easy. text messages, again, text is not good for me. Email's great. You're going to get a response just like that. If it's a text message, you may get a response literally in a couple of days for me. Yeah, and see, I can, and it's yeah, I can attest for to me, that. and I'm yeah. supposed to be the one. I'm the baby boomer. I'm the one that's not supposed to be in the text. I'm on that text. <laughs> He's on the text. I'm on the text. And you know that's 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 the that's the disparity. Right Isn't that there. funny? But everybody's yeah. different. Yeah. So figure out what's their preferred method. Okay, so I like that. Uh, don't don't blow people up with the call, 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 call. Well, and here's one other thing I want to say about that because I've yeah. had this happen a lot. Don't call me, then text me, then email me within five minutes. Mm. Pick. One. Take one. Yeah, good point. Jeez. I've done that. I just actually I did that yesterday. Yeah. 
I'm guilty. You just did that to someone? Yeah. But I but my messages aren't getting through, so I wanted to make sure that for sometimes some reason they can if it's look, getting lost. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they can look desperate, you guys. And you may yeah. be a you may be a pretty good a candidate for the role, but that desperation does you uh -huh. more damage than you know. People are busy. Talk about this all the time, don't we, we Foster? Do. We do. People are busy, and so you, you just don't come off desperate. People are busy, and we'll get back to you. It may take a couple days, but we'll get back. Yeah. Um, all right. Tell me, first of all, why you started the We Are VIP podcast. What, what is your why? My Casey why. Kingston, what is your why? My yeah. why is I love to give value first. Okay. I want to give value. I want to build those relationships. I want to help people find jobs. And I firmly, firmly believe that if I give value first, the money will follow. It has to. It can't help but follow. So I give value first, and that's the entire, and I'm very fortunate that I work for a company that is so forward-thinking that they were open, number one, to even hearing about the idea, and then number two, so, saying, hey, we want to do this with you, you know, and sponsoring the podcast. And so I get the opportunity to bring some really amazing thought leaders, um, you know, people that have been in the business for a while that can teach you how to do things. You guys have been on the show because I love what you do. You know, I'm very, very supportive of you guys because I think that you have a passion for what you do, your yeah. why. And my why is just, I just have, I've been blessed to meet so many neat people that I want to get their information out to as many people as possible. Yeah, and you do that. She, I'm, she is who you know, okay? <laughs> oh, right. yeah. So Casey, I, every time I turn around, she's like, hey, do you know such and such? And I'm like, nope. Yep. You, need to, you guys need to talk <laughs> oh, just I need to, today. And then next thing you know, I get an email. Yep. And it's connecting the two of us. Yeah, we're sitting here waiting for the show to start. She's like, oh, you guys need to talk to Scott. I, I'm going to connect you with Scott. Yep. Yeah, Scott Ferguson, <laughs> by the way. He's awesome. He's awesome. Well, tell us about VIP, right? For those of you that don't know, you can tell us about VIP and, and what do you do and who the heck is Casey Haston? Well, VIP is a recruiting agency, and we specialize in the accounting, audit, finance, and tax. Uh sectors. We do contract. We do direct hire, which is where I live. Um, we do um, our solutions, which are your longer term projects. Um, and we've, interestingly enough, on the show, we've brought each of those segments onto the show, not to sell, but to explain what we do, because I'm really not sure what solutions does other than long term projects. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what contract does, so we can help you there too. But we just, we're really growing by leaps and bounds. And I think that is because, I mean, we, we've had a couple of new people start during the pandemic, and I was talking to one of them earlier, and they're like, I was like, how are you liking it here? And he goes, this is unlike any recruiting shop I've ever worked in. You know, we pretty much just get to run our own desk. They want us to build these relationships first, where it, and it's just not as transactional. It's, it's truly about building those long-term relationships so that we can serve our clients and our candidates for many years to come. So I, I'm noticing a trend with that. There's um, a few... Not, not many, but there's a few out here in DFW that I'm aware of uh, recruiting agencies that are just all about relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that come here on this show. Um, you know, there's another uh, shop out here, High Profile Staffing. They do great as well. They're all oh, about, yeah, Bronwyn. Oh, yeah. You know, they're all Bronwyn. about building relationships. Love Bronwyn. And, and these, these recruiters are standout people. You know, I mean, just, just really good. You mentioned uh, the pandemic. So here's another great question I have for you. What should a job seeker be prepared to answer in their interviews about COVID? What are some questions that if you were them, like how would you prepare them for, for their interviews about COVID? So I am not really seeing a lot of questions coming from the interviewers to the candidates. But what I am encouraging candidates to do is ask in reverse. How is your company handling the situation? How are you taking care of your employees? How are you onboarding new people? How are you, you know, managing in this crisis? How many people have you laid off? Have you reduced salaries? Have you furloughed? You know, what are you doing? Because here's the theme that I'm hearing from people right now that still have jobs. They're like, I didn't really know what my company, company stood for until the pandemic hit. Uh -huh. And it can be very, very good or it can be very, very bad. But the very bad ones are like, you know, the high level CFO and all them. They didn't get 50% of their salary cut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that speaks volumes to me. And this is not a company I want to work for. Oh, I, I agree with that. So that's where I would encourage the job seekers to ask those kind of questions. Yeah. A lot of us are sick of corporate tactics. And we want to work for some companies that actually make us think that they care about what's going on. Those questions, guys, 
will make a determination of whether you want to work for that company. What you, what are you getting yourself into? I have a question for you, Casey. Where have you seen since the pandemic has happened, more people are working from home that are still working, um, but the industries that you serve, the clients that you serve, where are the needs shifting to? Is it still, I mean, just a broad base of talent, accounting, finance, financial services, things like that, that you're you're filling positions for, or how has that shifted? So the positions that I'm seeing that are still available are gonna be those positions that typically take advantage of the um, recession-proof times, like your alcoholic beverage distribution places. They're okay. not suffering. <laughs> right. um, private equity. Private equity for They're us. out investing yeah, right now. Are. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're doing really well. Um, what's another one that's still hiring? Um, a lot of your essential services. Sure. So they're still hiring. Supply chain logistics. Yes. So a lot of those are still doing really well. But I, but I will tell you, um, you know, we are not anywhere near where we normally are with job recs right now. So, and I just keep telling people, yeah. just be patient. I do believe it's going to open back up as the economy opens back up. But I think we're going to see a very different landscape mm -hmm. than have, what we see today. Do you have a lot of clients that had recs to fill and they're just on hold? Correct. Okay. So they're, they're still out there. It's just yeah, kind and of waiting right now. It is. And it's kind of, you know, we're not sure. Like one of my clients that I'm thinking of in particular, they're in the retail s space. And we had been working on a pretty high level uh, role for them prior to the shutdown. And when I touched base with them when we came back, because we're back in the office. I don't know if y'all are or not, but we are. Um, yes. <clears throat> but they um, said that they're probably not going to hire until first quarter now. Okay. So yeah. I think that's really, once we get past all this crucial, this time when everybody's like not, not tiptoeing anymore, but actually stepping their foot outside to go be a part of society again, I think that's when we're going to see those jobs come back. You gotta yeah. you gotta break, through, break the fear first. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that, you know, just tells me that and maybe you can, you know, agree or refute this, that I think it's wise for people during this time, during this unique pandemic, that the new normal is you're just you're just going to have to maybe expand your search. Right. Yeah. Maybe expand your skill set. So. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people are finding that they want to do that. Yeah. There has <laughs> been a lot of pivots during this time for people just because they're like, why was I doing that again? That's not where my heart is, you know? Yeah. I think the whole country, uh, well, the whole world for that matter, just got shook up, okay? And a lot of people yeah. that were unhappy now get an opportunity to reinvent themselves, yep. okay? Because uh, there were some old stats, okay, that, that really don't apply anymore, but it, they were 70% of Americans were unhappy with what they did, All right? Well, guess what? Now those 70%, <laughs> I mean... Let's let's use this as opportunity, guys, to to reinvent yeah. ourselves, to to get happy. We only got one life to live, okay, and we can't live that life in fear. And we right. can't. It, and I'm going to tell you right now, uh, fear. I talk about this all the time. Fear is the enemy's way of holding you back from who you're called to be. Uh, fear is actually the opposite of faith, okay. We talked about the Bible says fear not 365 times 365 in the Bible. 365 times. Right. Fear is the opposite of faith. Now, I'm not saying don't be careful, don't be cautious, but don't be afraid. Have faith. Drop it. Like that. Drop, Boom. Get that one. Boom. Boom. Here it is. <laughs> I think that in your, in your transition, if you are looking at new opportunities, you need to be developing yourself. How favorable do your clients look on people that are continuing in their education, getting new certifications? I mean, do, the, do they yep. look for that? In, Absolutely. Absolutely. In and now with the job market, you know, we went from being a candidate market where, you know, the can candidates could pick and choose where they went to work to being in the employer market, just like that. Yep. And so I think that, you know, companies that might have said, for my industry, it's the CPA, might have said CPA preferred before, now required. Mm. And they can do that. They can do so it. So any certifications that you can go out there and get any improvement, now's the time. So what you're saying is the the purple squirrel just got purpler. Yeah. <laughs> hey, for those of you that don't know what the heck a purple squirrel is, you're like, what? So, because a lot of it's funny. I talk about the purple squirrel. People are like, what? Uh, what's that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the purple squirrel is when these companies they they have all the requirements on the job description, and it's like, 
and they won't bend. Is that a human being? Right. Like, does that person even exist? They are defined. Sometimes they don't even exist. Right. And 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 yeah. And the hiring manager won't bend on certain yeah. things, and um, they call that the purple squirrel. Yeah. And it flies past a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unicorn's over. Flying purple squirrel. <laughs> but you know what that comes down to? It stems down to supply and demand. Yep. Right. Okay. And right now, the uh, the supply is. It does. You know. Well, and that's a, that's a great point because if you look, if you are in a competitive environment like we are right now, ultra ultra competitive. Think about all of those people who are now newly unemployed and mm -hmm. are looking. Now you're in competition with a bunch of people who were working. They were successful uh -huh. and due to no fault of their own, they were laid off. And so that number has just skyrocketed. But professional development, continuing education, uh -huh. additional certifications, those are all ways that you can further distinguish yourself, right? And I just want to say this, anytime, not just during a pandemic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, anytime. professional development, anytime. you should always be learning. All right, so I know I got you for like two more minutes. Yes. So, <laughs> she looked at her watch. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. so, okay. Uh, what do you contribute to more of your success? What you know? We were just talking about professional development or who you know. Duh. <laughs> it's almost like a trick we're question. In who you know? I mean, when I started networking and started, and you know, and I'm pretty kind of new to this networking thing, believe it or not. But when I started networking, that's when I started having success. And it's not because I go to you and I say, what can you do for me, Trevor? Because I go to you and I say, what can I do for you? That's And awesome. when you do that, mm -hmm. you will be successful. And if I remember correctly, guys, Casey shared with us that she was a desk accountant at one time. For a long time, right? 20 years. 20 boomers. That's a lot of beans. <laughs> 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 wow. See, I told you guys that recruiting <laughs> is a wonderful, wonderful career. We're not bad people. <laughs> no, no. I just, you know, and the, th the, the fact is, if you find a good recruiter, like the job father here. Oh, mm, Lord. This person can change your life. That's what happened to me. I found a good recruiter and she recognized, she didn't say, okay, you've done this kind of accounting, so I can place you here and make this much money. No, she saw the human factor and she said, you don't even like accounting, Casey. Why are you still doing this? Wow. And I was like, losing her commission, right? That she could have made off me. And she said, you know, you have such, you know, an energy. You work well with people. Have you ever thought about recruiting? I'm like, I don't know anything about recruiting. She's like, I'll teach you. And she did. And I tell everybody all the time, if you find your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. So, that is true. That is true. Yeah. Think about in your life, the people who has helped to shape you into who you are today. Right. So Foster, man, I appreciate you, man. I love you. Really. Shout out Thank to you. Brian Craig. Casey okay. has been one of those people. Ah, let me tell you. I mean, thank you. We want to get your information out there. Tell people how to connect with you. Um, but as far as the relationship piece, think about this. If you guys are working with a recruiter like Casey, you need to have that relationship because you might find yourself in a search mm -hmm. a year, two, how many down the line and, and you have a go-to person then. So a uh, great point. Yeah, how build that relationship for yes, sure. Yes, definitely. What can I do for Casey Haston on this show? You know what? What? You have already done something for me today. What did I do? You made an introduction that you had no idea how perfect it was to Tyra Bremer. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, so yeah. yep. I meant to say thank you to that. And Tyra, cannot wait to get to know you better. And thank you for all the connections today. Yeah. That's awesome. It's all about connecting people. But yep. what else can I do for you? I want to, I want to just want to hook Casey up because you're always <laughs> hooking me up. Everybody, all these, all these people, they're going to connect with you on LinkedIn. How uh, Calls? You want them? They, they can calls? call me or they can connect with me on LinkedIn. Just say, hey, saw you on the Who You Know. That, that way I'll be sure to respond because I do get a lot of LinkedIn's. Um, but for sure, just, you know, connect with me. Um, if, probably in this case, it's better to connect with me on LinkedIn first and let's set up a time using my Calendly just so that I can make Calendly. sure that I talk what? to everybody. Your what? Your, huh? Calendly. Your, cal your Calendly? Yeah. Oh. That was forgot, hard for forgot me to say that, that word in the beginning. <laughs> oh. in, in our summit. Such a lifesaver. Guys, Such there's life some saver. technology out there. Like your, your what? Say it again one more time. Calendly. Your Calendly. And hmm. there's so many things that you can integrate into that Calendly, like... If you need to accept credit cards, you can do that through oh. Calendly. Yeah. There's, it's just a great tool. It's yep. fabulous. You know where you job seekers. 
You guys are part of the largest job seeker network known around. Now, that's a lot of power. When you go to a Casey Haston and you say, Casey, can I help you? And she says, I need a, you guys know a whole lot of people. You're connected. Look at your LinkedIn. Yep. Look at what you can do to help Casey. And you know what? Casey will get that moxie to want to help Trevor more because Trevor helps. Yep. It's, it's a synergy kind of thing, you know? And I can tell you when I, and I don't work with very many candidates at a time because I do want to give them my attention. It's that whole relationship-based approach. But when I do work with a candidate, I get to know them very, very well. Um, and Yes, it is. And then when I get to know you well, I am your champion to the company. You want me to be your champion. You do. So I, I can attest to that because, you know, I'm not trying to get a job from her, but she's she's like a champion for us. For us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and when, oh, yeah. she, when you get Casey on your side. Oh, man, things are happening. <laughs> doors are opening. <laughs> things are happening. Doors open. Real Yellow talk. Sweet. Real talk. Doors are opening. She didn't take a class to learn how to do that. Mm -mm. It's just Casey. Mm, it is. I don't think I, I've met another person with as much of that spirit as you. Seriously. Well, thank you. I'm not kidding. Every time I turn around, yeah. she's mm -hmm. like, hey, have you met this person? You mm -hmm. need to meet this person. And I'm going to connect you with that person. I'm like. Sometimes I think I'm annoying. <laughs> no. I love it. I, no, I'm like, it's great. I've no, got it's... to a point where I know you now so to, to, to that point, And I'm like, no, I don't know. <laughs> She's gonna connect me. <laughs> All right, guys, I have a guest waiting. So well, thank, thank you so much for having me back on thanks, the Thanks, Casey. Thanks for listening to the Who You Know Show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston, and if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show. It's all about who you know.